So you're talking to a witness. And you tell them that the faithful and discreet slave, the governing body, the men in Brooklyn, uh, the Watchtower Society, is a false prophet. And they say they don't claim to be a prophet. What well, really is a prophet? What do they claim to be then? Let's find out. In chapter 3 of Revelation, this grand climax at hand, we see that the very first thing that pops out to you on this page, at least to me, is this gray corner over here, the bottom right-hand corner. What does it say? Let's zoom in. To understand the book of Revelation, we need to receive the help of Jehovah's Spirit, to discern when the Lord's day began, and what's this last one right here? To recognize the faithful and discreet slave today. This is a requirement to understand the book of Revelation. A book from the Bible, for those of you who don't know what Revelation is. Let's look at this. Let's look at this, this lovely illustration that we have here that they painstakingly painted for us. And they did with only three colors. And it's so miraculous that they can do that. And they show it to you every time that you fucking go and visit there in Bethel. Anyways, let's zoom in. Here we have what is supposed to be Jehovah God on his throne. Now, God is supposed to be androgynous. Not supposed to know man, female. I mean, it's not a male or female, but yet he's always portrayed as a man. There's God right there. That nice looking handsome guy right there with the crown. Yeah, man, Jesus H. Christ. Let's give it up for him. Round of applause. This right here is God's angel. His angelic messenger. Whose name escapes me at the moment. It's a good looking fellow. I can have a beard. No one else can have a beard. Just me. Just me. And Jesus. And God? And then here, who is this John? That's John. And what's this? Hmm. Are these the slaves? The channel? But where's the channel coming from? From John, who's getting it from the angelic messenger? Who's getting it from Jesus? Who's getting it from God? They are God's channel. So what they tell you comes from God. Right? channel of communication John received the inspired record through an angelic messenger wrote on the scroll transmitted to the congregations of his time happily for us God has preserved it for the encouragement of the almost 100,000 congregations of his united servants on earth today God had a channel for communicating revelation in John's day and John was the earthly part of that channel Likewise, God has a channel for giving spiritual nourishment for his slaves today. In his great prophecy concerning the conclusion of the system of things, if those, those of you who didn't catch that, they're referring to 1914. Jesus identified the earthly part of this channel as the faithful and discreet slave whom his master appointed over his domestics to give them their food at the proper time. Mind you, the beginning of this scripture says, who really is the faithful and discreet slave? It's a question. There's no answer given. But yet here, they say, even the question for this paragraph says, how did Jesus identify the channel that he would use to provide spiritual food for his slaves today? Likewise, God has a channel for giving spiritual nourishment to his slaves today. The Bible actually didn't say that. The paragraph said it. Because who wrote this? The Watchtower Society. So the Watchtower Society says that God has a channel for giving spiritual nourishment to his slaves today. And in his great prophecy concerning the conclusion of the system of things, 1914, Jesus identified the earthly part of this channel. Uh, the time that he identified them is supposed to be 1919. Uh, that's what kind of holds their whole thing together. That's when Jesus came and he, he made an examination and found them to be you know, I guess pure of heart. Anyways, he used this John class in unlocking the meaning of the prophecy. 
Those of the John class, some of them have shared for many decades in the fulfillment of these visions. So they're old and they've been around for a while. They have earnestly sought guidance from God and Jesus Christ in order to understand the prophecy fully. So they are communicating with God and Jesus Christ to help people understand the prophecy. So, we have God. Let's focus in on God. Hello, God. God's a good guy. God speaks to Jesus, who speaks to the angelic messenger, who speaks to John. And then he goes out to the people. So... John's not alive anymore. John's gone. John's dead and buried. Who is replacing John today? That's basically the question they're asking you. So the new channel of communication, instead of it being John, is now the faithful and discreet slave. Who is the faithful and discreet slave, everyone? Have a big round of applause. Who is the faithful and discreet slave? Men in Brooklyn. I do have to give you this, though, because I thought this was freaking hilarious. This book, Revelation, has a disclaimer. Let's read the disclaimer. Focus. Interpreting the scriptures. The mysteries locked up in the book of Revelation have for long baffled sincere students of the Bible. In God's due time, those secrets had me unlocked. But how? When? And to whom? Only God's spirit could make known the meaning as the appointed time drew near. Those sacred secrets would be revealed to God's zealous slaves on earth so that they would be strengthened to make known his judgments. It is not claimed that the explanations in this publication are infallible. Like Joseph of old, we say, do not interpretations belong to God? At the same time, however, we firmly believe that the explanations set forth herein harmonize with the Bible in its entirety showing how remarkably divine prophecy has been fulfilled in the world events of our catastrophic times. They know it's full of shit. They just tell you it's full of shit. They just told you it's full of shit. This is what we believe right now. This is your truth. This is your hard truth. 